Okay, guys, are you still trying to figure out this W-4 form and exactly how to fill it out? Or did you just get a new job and you don't know exactly what you're supposed to do? Or did you get married? Did you have a child? Did a child move out of your home? Or did you get divorced? If you had any of these things happen to you, then you need to change your W-4. And I'm gonna go through all of the scenarios and all of the ways and all of the things that you need to do to make sure that your W-4 is correct and that you are submitting the right information so that you are not owing the IRS. Keep watching. So let's get started with this W-4 tutorial. It's been a long time coming and I'm actually able to do it now because good old Canva has it all set up for me where I can just go in here, record in here and present from here. So great. So what you need to know about the W-4 is that most people will complete a new one when you start a new job or you fill out a new one when there's changes in your financial situation. So if you got married, if you had a child, if you got divorced, if your child moved out of your home and went to like college or something like that, um, or just moved out, if your, just your situation has changed. The W-4 basically tells your employer how much money they need to withhold from your paycheck to send to the IRS on your behalf. So when you get your W-2 at the beginning of the new year, in that W-2 in the sec in box number two will always say how much taxes your job took out of your paycheck. This is um, a percentage based on your income of what the tax bracket for your tax bracket so every tax bracket has a different amount or percentage that's supposed to be taken out of their income and that's what uh, your job bases it off of your w-4 the information you put on your w-4 and whatever the percentage is that the irs has already established and just know that you can always, some HR representatives or payroll representatives will try to stop you from filling out new W-4s throughout the year. You have the right to complete a new W-4 whenever you need. So you contact your payroll person or your payroll department or your HR department and get a new one. So let's go through some of the ways that you file your taxes and then let me show you exactly what you need to do on your W-4 form to make sure that it is correct, okay? So when you're filing single, that's most people that don't have children, that are not married, um, they're filing single and you don't have any dependents and all of that. When you fill out your W-4, of course, every time, uh, hopefully you can see this, I'm circling, every time you're going to fill out the top part this, with, with your personal the personal information, you're going to, and I know this says 2022, however, it applies because it hasn't changed this year, okay? So you fill it out with your personal information here. And then in these little boxes right here, you're going to check what you file as and you file as single. You're going to skip step two because that does not apply to you at all. And then when you go to step three, you do not have any dependents. You don't claim, claim anyone or anything like that. And you're not going to put anything in any of these boxes at all. You're also not going to fill out any of this other income, not from jobs. So say you have a business or whatever, you can fill that in. I wouldn't because I would go ahead and allow my job to take out when I, if I'm single, I would allow my job to take out the correct amount of taxes. Also, you can put in an extra withholding. This is good, and this is going to come out every single pay period. So if you get paid weekly, bi-weekly, every two weeks, every other week, or monthly, 
they are going to hold out this amount that you put here out of each one of your paychecks. So this is beneficial for people that find themselves owing every single year and then you don't really have anything else to write off. You don't have um, property that exceeds the amount that you should have. You don't have don donations and things of that nature. I would suggest going ahead and putting in this box at least 10% of your income. So if you get paid $100 a week, put $10 in there so that they take $10 out of your paycheck every single week. I'm saying that that is only a suggestion. That is not something that everybody needs to do because everybody's situation is different. So that is for the single people. Then you would sign here and you would date here. Now let's go on to head of household. Now, if you have, if you're head of household, that means that you have one or more dependents and you are not married. Again, you have one or more dependents and you're not married. You do the same thing I said with the single people. Fill out all of this personal information. Go, You skip number two unless you have another job. That's a whole other situation. I'll get to that a little bit later. So, And then here you're going to claim your dependents and you're going to put in how much or how many people are under age 17 and you multiply that times 2000. So in this case, you have one child, multiply it times 2000, that's 2000. You put the 2000 here. You don't put anything in this area. You sign and date it and submit it. Now, if you have a child or a dependent that's living with you that's over 17, then you're going to only multiply that amount of people by 500. You're going to put that information here, 500. You're going to put 500 here, and you're not going to fill out anything in this area, and you're going to sign and date. All right, let's go to the next one. Now, the next one is married filing joint. That means you're married and you file with your spouse and you can have dependents or you don't have to have dependents in this case, but you're still filing with your spouse, right? So again, you fill out the information here, you check the correct box. And then in this section, this is especially for you. So this tells your employer that both of you are getting taxes taken out. So if you find yourself, again, you have to know what your tax situation is. So if you find that every year you and your spouse get a, a healthy or a large refund, then that means that maybe you want to check this box and make it where you're not getting a huge refund, but you're able to keep your money throughout the year, okay? And I'm going to explain that a little bit more later on in the video. So if you have a child that is, say, they're 19 and they still live with you, you can put them on here. I'm just giving an example. Either child, if you put, if you have children under 17 or 17 and under you can put times one or times two or however many children multiply it and put that amount here and put that amount here but if you have children over 17 multiply that times the 500 and then you put the amount here and then you put nothing here once again and then you sign and date and turn it in now we're going to go to the married filing separate. These are people that are married, but they do not file with their spouse. And they may or may not have dependents, but that is basically what is on your um, taxes. So what you would do is you would be, say you're filing separate from your spouse. 
you're going to t- put this information and in, and in again and so for for people that think that this is a good choice well, let me just tell you it's really not <laughs> It's really not a good idea to file separate from your spouse unless you definitely have to say you guys are separated. Maybe you're going through a divorce or something like that. Because when you file separate from your spouse, the two of you still have to have a, um, your your tax returns still have to be uh, the same. So if your spouse doesn't take certain deductions, et cetera, from their taxes, then you can't either. So that's a whole nother gamut. I don't recommend filing separate if you're married, but hey, that's up to you. That's your choice. You just decide that with your tax person and figure out what's best for you in your situation. Okay. But again, when you go through this, um, you would just fill this out and then you would check married filing separate right here in the single area. You would basically be taxed as a single person. So that means um, you would not put any of this information. This would need to be blank. This would need to be blank. And all of this would not be completed. And then you sign and date. Okay, moving on to our qualified widower. So when you're a qualified widower, that means that your spouse has passed away within the past two years and you guys filed taxes together before they passed away and you did not remarry within that time frame. So if um, you're married, your spouse passes away, you can file as a qualified widower for the next two years. So that means that when you're a qualified widower, you can still take a lot of the married filing joint taxes and tax breaks but you are still filing just with your income for those couple of years and then after that you would have to go to either filing single or head of household or if you get remarried then you would file with your spouse however you guys want to file now say you pat your your person your spouse passed away you have a child you would fill this out as like i said it Personal information at the top, you would click um, right here where it says married filing on, uh, married filing joint or qualified widower. Then here, if you have a dependent, again, you would do the one times 2000, put that there, put that there, and then sign and date it. I know this is becoming redundant, but I just want to make sure everybody understands what they're doing and how to fill this information out. Okay, this one is for students and or dependents. So this means that you are claimed on someone else's taxes, but you are still filing your taxes to get a refund. So this is like for college students that may have a job and but their parents still files taxes with them on it. This is also for people that are maybe 16 or 17, still living in the household with their parents, but they also have a job and the job has been taking taxes out of their paycheck. They still want to file um, a tax return to get their refund back. This is for that person. Now, if you're a student or a dependent and you're going to get your first job, you would you have to fill out a W-4, right? Okay, so you're going to fill this out. You're going to put your information here. Then you're going to click single, okay? Because you're single. You're not going to fill out anything in this area at all. And then you're not going to put anything in the claims or dependents information here. And you're not going to fill out anything in this area, and then you're gonna sign, you're gonna date it, and you're gonna turn it in. Now, just be aware that they are going to take whatever the maximum tax amount is that they need to take out of your paycheck, that's gonna be taken out. But you can file your taxes in the new tax year and get that back 
on your tax as a tax refund. So just so you know that. So sometimes students will have checks, they will get them, they will be like, oh my gosh, it's, you know, I worked so many hours and I was supposed to be getting this, but now I'm only getting this because they took all these taxes out. You can file and get it back um, the next year, or you can do what's on the next section. So let me go to the next one. This last section is very special. Again, you should not file this way. I mean, you should not fill out your information this way unless you are sure this is the way you need to do it. You know exactly what you're doing or you are in contact with a tax person that's going to help you um, know exactly what you are choosing. So this next way to fill out your W-4 is filing exempt. Now, certain circumstances would be beneficial to file exempt. For example, like the student, they could file exempt and that would be beneficial for them because maybe they don't want to pay taxes and get a file of return because maybe they have to pay to file a return and all these other things. So they can file exempt. Also, if you do not usually owe uh, or you don't owe back taxes or you don't owe every year, then you can file exempt. But again, you should know exactly what you're doing when you put exempt on your W-4. So at the top of your W-4, you would put your personal information. You would also fill out this information however you usually file, right? Skip this section, the skip section two. Skip section three. You're going to go all the way to the bottom of section four. And right here under the 4C line, you're going to write exempt very boldly so that the payroll person or HR person or whoever you submit this to knows exactly what you're trying to do. You write exempt here. You sign, you date, you submit. Again, if you don't know what you're doing and you don't know your tax situation, then I do not recommend filling this out with an exempt. But if you know what's going on and you know how to file, et cetera, go ahead and put exempt here. Now let's go into some of the things that I was going to say earlier. When you do your taxes and you, you, know, you use your tax preparer or whoever it is that does your taxes, they should be able to give you information on what's beneficial for you every single year. And it's very important for you to know your own tax situation. If you know that every year you owe, then it is important that you get the right amount of money taken out of your paychecks every single time you get paid. If you get a high refund, every year, then maybe you need to tweak your W-4 a little so that you are not paying so much in taxes. But everybody's situation is different. So let me give a few of my special tips <laughs> that I give to my clients. And I know that everybody believes in different things, but number one, if you know that you're not a quote unquote good manager of money, then maybe you do want to make sure that the amount of taxes, the necessary amount of taxes or over amount of taxes are taken out of your paycheck every time you get paid. And then you want the IRS to hold on to it for you until tax return time. And then you know that you're going to get a refund. For example, um, I know a client that says that they want to make sure that the, the IRS takes all of the taxes that they need to take. So they don't want to, you know, play around with it. And they don't want to be unsure to know that the IRS is um, getting what they're supposed to get. And then the IRS can take whatever they want and then return to or refund to him 
however much they're supposed to refund to him. So in that instance, I understand that. he It's not that he can't manage his money throughout the year. He just chooses to make sure that everything is paid correctly to the IRS. So in that situation, if you're in that situation, then you need to go ahead and make sure that the right amount of taxes are taken out. Sometimes on the W-4, you might want to put, hey, okay, uh, take out more taxes out of my uh, check. Hey, I understand it. But you guys know me. If you follow me for any amount of time, you know that I'm all about getting my money throughout the year. So in that situation, if you know that you can manage your money properly, that if you get your money every, all throughout the year out of your paycheck, if you owe or whatever, you will have it or you can uh, save it, then do what I suggest, which is just take just enough out for taxes, whatever that is, make sure that you put your deductions and all that um, in there, sometimes file exempt, sometimes not, change it up. And as you get your checks, every time you get paid, whatever is extra, or there maybe there's money that, you know, maybe last year you were getting 1500 a month. And then this year, when you made the changes, you get 1600 a month, then take that extra $100 and put it in a high yield savings account or an IRA or a CD or anything that's going to make money back for you because you're going to get interest on the money that you're depositing into there. So that is good for people that really don't owe and they want to see their money throughout the year. Now for people that usually owe, let's the flip side. You need to make sure that you're getting the right amount of money taken out you need to put the extra money on your W-4 for the IRS to take out every single paycheck. And also, I would suggest taking a couple of hundred dollars or maybe a hundred dollars and putting it into the same thing, some type of account that's going to earn, your earn you interest every month so that you at the end of the year if you owe at tax time you already have all of that money to pay your taxes and you have earned interest on the money that you're using to pay your taxes so these are just some things that tax planning really helps you you know i'm not just a tax preparer or whatever i'm actually an accountant a tax accountant and i am all about tax planning, planning for your future, planning for things that you don't know that are coming up and making sure that you are aware of the different situations so that you can live your best life and use your money wisely the way that you want to use it for you and your family. So if you have any questions or any concerns, or you don't understand exactly what I um, was able to see, I mean, was, was talking about, make sure that you put a comment in the comment section and just ask me those questions and I will answer them as best as I can. Um, maybe I'll make another video about it so that I can uh, answer you in a video. But just make sure that you are making the best choice for you and your tax situation and you're not going off of what your friend is doing or your family member or anything like that, but that you are making the choices that are best for you and your family and your financial situation. Make sure you like this, share with your friends, and if you like what we're doing here at the Financial Spotlight, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you as a part of the Spotlight family. Have a good one. Bye.